I'm getting ready to start a new project. It's a, uh, it's a vase. And uh, I'm wanting to use some of my shop made tools in this too. Uh, I've got a homemade hook tool right here that I made. And I just want to see how this thing works. I've actually had it for a while, but I, I haven't really had a chance to use it. So uh, I'm going to see how that thing works. Uh, I know it's really sharp, so we'll see how good it cuts. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to try to use that. Uh, it may be a fail. I don't know. Uh, it's an awful big hook from what I understand. Uh, I don't know. We'll just have to see how it works. I didn't know how big a hook I needed to make. But I made that hook from an old saw blade. Uh, an old craftsman saw blade. And uh, I'm really anxious to try it out. So we're going to see how that works. If it works good and I get good feedback on it, you know, I may do a video on how I made that. Uh, uh, people may want, to, may want to use a hook tool. But uh, anyway, I'm going to be using my scrapers and things like that and my hollowing tools. Uh, they're all shop made. So uh, I'm going to get busy on that stuff. But uh, yeah, I want to make this vase. It's out of a piece of elm. Uh, I've already actually made the base and uh, I'm sitting here looking at it but you can't see it yet until until the end uh, of the thing it turned out good uh, but I made it out of a, a, an elm log it's about 12 inches tall overall and uh, I've got a mahogany top and all that I'm that uh, I'm putting on it so uh, if you're interested and you want to see this face oh yeah and it's a uh, it is waterproof. Uh, I wanted to make it so people could put live flowers in it because I get a lot of those questions uh, when people buy my vases. Well, uh, you know, can I put water in it? <laughs> and up until now, my answer's been no. It's a dry flower vase, uh, you know. So now they can they can put water in it. They can use it for live flowers. They can use it for dry flowers. It doesn't matter. So. Anyway, let's get on with this. I'm, uh, I'm anxious. Anxious to get it going. Alright, well starting out, I've, al I've actually already roughed this thing into a cylinder. But uh, I'm just, I'm just kind of removing a lot of the bulk material with my roughing gouge. And uh, it's a good way to get rid of, of bulk material. Uh, I'm not worried about any kind of tear out or anything like that. I'm just trying to get rid of a lot of, of, a lot of wood. Uh, as you can see on the bottom here, I've, I've got a glue block, a uh, waste block glued on the bottom of the vase down here, and that's what I'll form my tenon with. I wanted to use the entire log as much as I could on this project, so I, I actually glued a tenon on it. <clears throat> anyway, that's, uh, that's most of the bulk material. I'll start working on the tenon a little bit here, and I'm just using my 5 8 bowl gouge to shape it. Making nice push cuts right down the side of it. And you have to make sure that it stays square with the bottom. Uh, <clears throat> Because if it's not square, uh, you can't get a good grip with your chuck. Alright, just removing a little extra waste right there. I'm just cutting that off with a, with a skew. Alright. Okay, now I can actually start my shaping. After I finish this tenon up. Square the shoulder to the uh, to the tenon. And people ask me why do I always use tenons and not recesses? Well, you know I do use recesses, but I like tenons better uh, because they basically they compress the wood, whereas a recess, if you're not careful, you can split the wood. So uh, I generally use a tenon most of the time. But here we are starting to rough shaping. I'm using my 5 8 uh, bowl gouge from Carter and Son. 
Uh, I really like this scout. And uh, the M42 high speed steel really, really does keep an edge very well. We'll come down through here and make a, a couple of little shearing cuts just to kind of keep, keep everything sort of smoothed up. There's a bullfrog out here in the pool keeps keeps hollering. I'm sure you probably hear that. I apologize. But now you know we're just kind of making some scrapes and uh, I'm forming a cove up here at the top. I, I just think that'll look nice on this vase. Uh, it just came to me at, at the time. And uh, right off the bat before I start hollowing I want to I want to bring up my steady rest and uh, and install it on here so I can uh, so I don't get quite as much vibration and stuff out of the piece possibly throw it out of the lake but anyway we'll start out we'll square off the top it was uh, the chainsaw cut right there it wasn't very uh, straight but now we're just going to start truing everything up on the top and I'm beginning to get the basic shape that I really want Break it down a little bit. Now I've got cracks on the top and the bottom. Just checks where the where I didn't seal the ends of the wood or anything like that. So I'm going to fix those. I'm going to fix those also here in just a few minutes. But right now I'm going to start boring. I'm going to use my largest portion of it, which is a two inch, and just get down as deep as I can with it. And then I'll go with with my half inch drill bit to finish out my depth all the way down to the bottom. Now I'm ready to to go in with I use my depth gauge here to find out how long or how deep I need to drill, which is right about there. It's pretty deep about 10 inches I guess from the top right here so my air going and just start drilling it all the way to my line and that's that blow it out okay now now I now have a hole all the way to within about three quarter inches of the bottom. I don't want to go much more than that. You notice this amazing, uh, it mixes by volume or weight. This uh, this particular uh, Alumilite product, it, uh, you can mix by volume or weight. This is a five minute epoxy. And I'm gonna put in a little bit of perlite to give me kind of a turquoise look. Because I don't know, I, I like cracks filled with turquoise. It, it to me, I, that's that's my favorite color to, to seal cracks and stuff with. But anyway, we're gonna mix this up real good, and then we're gonna start just filling all those cracks on the top and the bottom. Any cracks that I see, I'm gonna fill with this stuff. I'll start on the bottom. I'm just using. I'm just using a plastic knife as a as like a putty knife. You can kind of force force this epoxy into the crack with it, and also keep it kind of smooth and smooth down to the surface, also somewhat. But this stuff is is very viscous, and uh, it's not real thick. It likes to run, as you can see. It likes to run a little bit, and it's but it soaks into the wood really well which tells me that uh, once this stuff hardens up, those cracks will be, uh, they'll just be, no, they just won't even be cracks anymore. It'll be a solid piece once this stuff really hardens up because it does soak in so well. 
and especially on this end grain. But you have to work really fast because this is a five minute epoxy. And of course you could use any epoxy you wanted to. I just, I like this because it's five minute. I'll be able to work on this thing in another hour or two. Now once I get it back on the lathe, I just start, I just start scraping and doing some, uh, some shearing cuts to cut that, to cut that epoxy off and get the surface even back up. And this will really make those cracks stand out with the turquoise inside it. You can kind of see here, and I'll get you a little closer in a few minutes. Just continue on with some shaping and stuff. I had had a little bit of that epoxy that ran almost the entire length. <laughs> it ran from about the top all the way down to the bottom. But now I'll do I'll do the same thing with the bottom. I'm just trying to even up the surface where I put my epoxy. Getting shear scrapes right here. Moving in my cove. very carefully because I don't I've got a really nice surface now and I don't want to uh, I don't want to start doing any type of aggressive cuts and things like that and maybe get some tear out so I'm just going to continue on nice and easy scrapes and shearing cuts until I get until I get the surface the way I want it get a little bit better control on, on these curves with this with this bigger tool. This is my 5-8 spoil gouge that I'm using. Alright, let's see how we're doing here. Oh yeah, you can see this little hole that I filled up. It was a knot hole and uh, I filled it with the turquoise colored epoxy also. As you can see how the cracks just took that epoxy really nice really nice and all that in the middle that's all going to be gone so so I'm not worried about that now I'm going to put a coating of deft, uh, deft on there sanding sealer uh, it'll just help me get all my sanding done really well and you know harden up the surface a little bit uh, you know for sanding for sanding later I'm gonna go ahead and just put this, put a nice coat over the whole thing. And you can see where the epoxy was, where the epoxy soaked in, it's disappeared now. You can't see the, the, the dark area where the epoxy had actually soaked into the wood. It's, uh, as soon as you put this, this stuff on it, it uh, kind of masks that. And, uh, really makes it uh, look a lot more natural. Well, we're just about done with our depth. Then we'll get to start working on the inside. <laughs> That's the fun part. I'm going to try to use my hook tool uh, see how it goes uh, we'll see uh, see how that works out and this is my hook tool here and I really should have had my steady rest up uh, because I actually ended up breaking my tenon and I had to remount everything uh, I had to remount that tenon on there, and then I realized I'd, <laughs> I'd put up my steady rest. But this hook tool was really cutting good. I mean, it's very efficient. Uh, you can see here, and it makes such a smooth cut also. 
uh, you can't reach really deep with it, but I could get about a third of the way. I could get all the way down to my cove and, uh, and even deeper a little bit. But you can, you can see here how that thing really cuts. And uh, I've got a really short handle on it too, so it, it could probably done better. But buddy, that thing doesn't a trick inside there. And I'll show you right here the, the cut quality that it makes. Let's zoom in just a little bit right here and show you. You see, that is a beautiful cut that that tool makes right there. You can see here how it, how it cuts. It's standing almost on its end, but it just, uh, you just walk right around the curves with it. And it does really well. And I made this from probably a 20 or 30 year old saw blade. Uh, I just I cut a couple little strips out of the saw blade, shaped it in, into a hook, uh, and sharpened it up. I did have to heat treat it too though after I shaped it because I had to use heat to shape it. As you can see it, it's down to about where the cove is. So it reached a good one third of the way in there before it really, you can see now I'm starting to get some vibration out of it. I didn't go much further than that. And I, I just went on to my, to my bigger hollowing tool. This hook tool really cut good. Uh, I was told the hook is really big, which I didn't know what size hook to make anyway, but I'll, I'm gonna make some more of these and uh, probably make some a little smaller, maybe a little bit less aggressive. This one sure did work nice. And here, I'm, I'm using my my uh, my hollowing tool. I got a couple of catches right here at the beginning, but it really smoothed out and uh, helped me get all the way to the bottom down there. But uh, I'm using John Williams tool rest here. Uh, I wish I'd have got the whole thing in the frame, but it's got a, a front holder and a rear holder to hold your tool steady and uh, it all it all goes into one banjo but it, it really works good but i'm making pull cuts across the bottom from the center to the side and then i'll pull up a little and uh and just work on that real good and it, this thing hollows really well it's uh it's an old planer blade that i that i sharpened into it like a round nose scraper to get in there Okay, now I'm starting to work on the on the uh, the rim of the vase, and this is a, a pretty good chunk of mahogany that I had, and uh, I, I thought mahogany would look good on the top of this thing, so that's what I'm making it out of. Just getting it all trued up right now, and I'll put a tenon on this to match inside that mouth on the vase, so I get it dead center. And, uh, and glue it up nice and tight. I'm still using my 5 8 bowl gouge here. I want to make sure this is as flat as I can get it. I measure the mouth with my vernier calipers. Lock it in. Lock in my diameter, and I'll use that to gauge my tenon. working at it until you get the perfect fit. Uh, you don't want it loose, but you don't want it too tight either where it, where it tries to split your vase. You 
just want a good fit. And that's what I've got. All right, so there we go. That's got it done. I hear a car coming. That's one of my neighbors. He's got a really loud car. I apologize for that. But hopefully it'll blow up pretty soon and I won't have to listen to it anymore. But okay, now I've got a really good fit gonna kind of shape it a little bit just kind of removing some of the bulk material right now uh, before I actually get it glued on I've got to leave a shoulder here a nice square shoulder for it to mate onto the base with That's about as far as I want to go. All right, my top's just about ready to glue on now. Just a little bit of scraping and touching up, and it's ready to go. I actually used my old Barracuda chuck on this one so I wouldn't have to take the other vase off, off my other chuck. That's still a good chuck. It's just uh, it's smaller. It's smaller than my uh, one way. But it's still a good chuck. Alright, getting the vase mounted back on here. Uh, one way chuck. There we go. All right, good. Now we'll bring up my steady rest and get it in. In position. And this is the actual steady rest that I built uh, in my video. Still using it. It's about three years old now and uh, works like a charm. Uh, a good buddy of mine sent me the, uh, the polyurethane wheels so I don't have the wooden wheels on it anymore. Now I'm starting my sanding on the inside. And uh, this is a uh, 60 grit on a, uh, I stuck a piece of foam on the end of a stick. And I, I just put my, my sandpaper on it. But I have to reach inside there to sand uh, up close to the shoulder. And I just have to use sandpaper there. But I'll, I'll go up to about 320 there on the inside. Then I'm getting ready to mount mount the, the uh, rim on and I'm just going to do that with some epoxy with this uh, turquoise uh, powder because I wanted I wanted the transition right there uh, I wanted to be able to see the turquoise epoxy uh, around my transition and uh, and it turned out really nice so I, I'm just gonna apply this stuff, and this is just the uh, Gorilla epoxy, like you get at uh, Home Depot or Walmart. It's a five, I believe it's a five-minute epoxy. You've got a little bit of working time, but not much. So you have to you have to be kind of quick with it. But I'll put it on the rim, and I'll put it on the mouth of the base. And you can see uh, voids and stuff in the mouth of this face. That'll all be gone. Uh, that'll all be gone very shortly. I'll, I'll turn all of that out. All right, now we've got that placed in. Bring up a pressure block in my tailstock and lock it all down. Let it dry. Check out part two.